Good evening. Good morning. <laughs> Afternoon, I guess it is. God bless you all. Hello, Mother Williams, Sister Stacy, Sister Faith. God bless each of you. Appreciate the Lord allowing us to gather today and appreciate each of you, Pastor Aaron, amen, and so many of you that are on. Well, we thank God for you and your faithfulness to the work of the Lord and to our services. God bless each of you. I believe God has something for us today and I believe you're gonna be blessed. As others are coming in to greet one another, as others are coming in, Sister Linda, God bless you, Mother Gaston. Pastor Aaron. Good morning, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. So good morning, Pastor Aaron. How are you today? Thank you. Pastor Bishop, all you people of God. Pastor Aaron, can you hear me? Bishop. Maybe me. I don't hear anything. Hey. Oh, God bless you. Go God ahead. God bless Pastor you, Bishop. Bishop. God bless you, people of God. Amen. We thank and praise God for this morning. Uh, thank God for this opportunity to be here uh, with you. Uh, that's the praise beauty of uh, virtual. I'm actually thank at you, work. Sister Stevens, Sister Tiny Come. Lee. Amen. So we just thank and praise God for being here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Other guests and I can't hear anything. It may be me. Thanks. Y'all let me know if you all can hear and I'll step out and check my system. Everybody able to hear Pastor Aaron? Man, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. And as the song would say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. <laughs> God bless you. Carry on, Pastor Aaron, until we I come back in. Amen. 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 Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way. Lord, we continue to pray for the things of the world, the tragedies, the things that are going on in the world today. But God, we know that you are yet in control and we know that you are able to change. But God, most of all, we thank you that you are able to keep us in this time. You are able to bless us. You are able to continue to allow us to be what you would have us to be in these last and evil days. And Lord, we ask that you bless this day, bless your people, oh God, and bless the word that will come forth from our leader. And we just thank you and we glorify you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I'm going to pull up this word real quick here. I'm going to be coming to you from Mark chapter 12, verse 35 through 37. And it reads, and Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Jesus or that Christ is the son of David. For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord, whence he is then his son which he is then his son. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of that word. Amen. I just thank God amen, that we serve an awesome God. Amen. That one day that Christ is going to put his enemies and all of our enemies under 
his footstool. Amen. So we thank you, praise God. We're looking forward to a blessed day. Amen. I just chimed, I am at work today, and I just chimed in to greet the saints. Amen. Read the scriptures. Amen. But I won't be able to stay on. But I'm sure the Lord will bless you through our leader, through our bishop, and he has a great word from you. And also want to also say um, happy anniversary to our bishop and first lady. Amen. For the 43 years. Amen. Still got a while to catch up to that. Amen. But we thank and praise God for this, this time. And we're we'll giving them. Amen. So God bless you all, saints. You have a great and blessed day. Thank you, Pastor Aaron. We appreciate those words. And certainly it's a blessing to be with the saints of God one more time. One more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together one more time. And I appreciate the fact that so many of you have celebrated with us, Sister Amos and myself, on our uh, celebration of our 43rd wedding anniversary. Yes, 43 years ago have come and gone so quickly, but we thank God for the peace of God that have given us a wonderful marriage and relationship for our children and our grandchildren and extended family, mothers, sisters and brothers, sisters-in-laws and brother-in-law. It's just been a, a rich experience. If you haven't been married, I recommend you try it. It's a good thing. Amen. And watch God bless you even as he has blessed me. We thank God for the uh, prayers of the righteous that avail much. Thank you, Sister Lee. I appreciate that, Sister Stevens, and all of you that have wished us. In fact, there were so many hundreds of people that have uh, wished us uh, well during our uh, celebration. Now, that celebration actually is tongue in cheek. Sister so Ames is still in quarantine, although she is on the line. To thank God for her. Amen. Being able to uh, at least participate in the service, but she is still in quarantine due to the virus that has plagued not only our nation, but our world. And sometimes we think it's getting better, but then it flares up again. But, you know, it's our human behavior that is the element that can help us to get rid of of this disease. So we just got to adapt and not try to dictate to the virus what we will do and won't do, but learn to accept the situations as they are. As a friend of mine wrote a song, he said, accept what God allows. And that's what we have to do, accept what God has allowed. Right now, he's allowing COVID-19 to yet be with us. Amen. And we're going to do our best to avoid it, do our best to be clear of it. But most of all, we're going to use every opportunity we have to give glory to God, to bless his name, to lift up our hands and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Right now, wherever you are, lift those hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you for the good things you've done. Thank you for the blessings that have made it uh, life more comfortable. Thank you. Even with the gas prices at $5 a gallon or more in some places, thank you that we're still able to go where we want to go. See, some people don't even see the miracle in that. You would have thought back when gas was 2 and $3 and we were complaining that if it ever hit $5, we would park our cars and carpool and use community uh, transportation. But I see cars on the road like there's no issue. Why? Because many of us have to recognize it is the Lord that sustains us. Man does not dictate our blessing, but it is God. Amen. Now say of yourself, I am blessed. Come on, say it. I am blessed. Hallelujah. I am blessed because the Lord has put his blessing on me. We praise God for each of you, and we're glad to see you, and we thank God. We look forward to seeing you on the first Sunday uh, in uh, the new year, excuse me, in the next month, amen, first Sunday of July. We expect to be uh, worshiping together just as we did on the first Sunday in June. A lot of things are happening. We are asking God to accelerate so we can complete our project, amen, and return to a normal schedule. But most of all, uh, let's stay connected and stay with God and watch the Lord bless us uh, according to his excellent greatness. Amen. Let's bow our heads and talk to the Lord today in prayer. Dear Lord, our Father, we thank you and we honor you for the things that you have done. You have been good to us and we have no complaints. We say yes to you, to your name and to your word. We pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts today. 
speak to our minds, strengthen us for the days that are ahead. Help us, oh God, to accomplish all that we need to accomplish. Continue to supply all of our need according to our riches and your riches in glory. Help us, Lord, to be the sons and daughters we would desire to be and you would have us to be. And we'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And I believe God's going to do just that. I believe God's going to enable you to have a quality and blessed life uh, because the peace of God, the blessings of God are not dictated by an economy. They're dictated by the Lord, our God himself. Say with me, I am blessed. Hallelujah. How many are blessed today? I give God a praise everybody right now. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord. Well, today is a great day. It is Sunday. Amen. And it is the uh, Sunday that is just before Father's Day. Next Sunday is Father's Day. And I simply encourage each of you to, if you have a living father, do some things to share life with him. If you, your father is deceased, just have some pleasant memories and remember what God has done uh, through having a father in your life. Amen. And if you're simply a surrogate, you are standing in because of an absent father, helping some young woman, some young man uh, to understand life and to, to trust that all men are not bad, all men are not evil, all men are not hateful, all men will not abandon you. Amen. That God is able to put somebody in their lives that will stay with them. Amen. Every now and then, God will put somebody around you and they just need the presence of a strong man. And so if you have that person in your life, an older person who has been like a father unto you, celebrate that individual and watch God do what he can in your life. And if you don't have anybody at all, just celebrate me. I'll be your father for the day. Amen. I just want you all to celebrate Father's Day as passionately as we do Mother's Day. I know that's a tall order. All the men already understand, but it's all right. It's just good to be here and good to show appreciation one to another. We thank God for the elders and ministers, the deacons, the saints, all the church mother, Mother Mayo, and all of the mothers and all of the sisters and brothers in Christ. Wherever you are, I pray God's blessing be upon you and that his gift and his anointing rest on you. Today, I want you to go with me into the book of Colossians. Our reading will be in Colossians chapter 1, Colossians 1, amen, and there's some scripture that we're going to read there in that first chapter. In fact, uh, it is a, a wonderful text. It is a text that fits all of us because it leads us to understand how we receive reconciliation, how we are called back into the right relationship with the Lord. In this particular text, if you'll begin your reading with the fourth verse, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of love which ye have to all the saints for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you. Since the day you heard of it and you knew the grace of God in truth. Also you, as you also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. But this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us 
into the kingdom of his son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Hallelujah. For it pleased, verse 19, the Father, that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Yet now hath he reconciled. And finally, verse 22 and 23, in the body of his flesh through death to present you, you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight, if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven. Well, I, Paul, am made a minister. Now, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. I wanted to give you that reading, that history of Paul's letter to the Colossians. He presents it in this context. I'm excited for you. I'm happy for you. I've heard about you since we heard that you now have faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for the church. In other words, while Paul is the authority of the church, he has a servant, a Epaphras, a preacher, a teacher, and others who are working and ministering in the area. Paul is, of course, the senior pastor, if you will, but his associates have been busy and they have preached out a church in Coloss. And Paul writes to let them know I'm excited that you have heard uh, the word of truth and that it's come to you and that it's arrived in your heart, that you found Jesus. And in fact, the reason that uh, I have continued to pray for you is because I want you to be filled, he says, with the knowledge of his will. You, you've gotten saved. But I want you to be filled with the knowledge of his will and with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And I want you to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. I want you to be strengthened with all might and uh, according to his glorious power. And, and I want you to have patience and long suffering with joyfulness. I want you to give thanks to the Father who have made us to be partakers of the inheritance that the church gets, the saints in light, those who have been delivered from darkness and translated into his kingdom. Hallelujah. In fact, we have all of this because we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins. Paul continues to remind them, I want you to know that he is the image of the invisible God. You won't see the father, but he gave us an image to his son, Jesus Christ. And because of him, by him, through him, everything is made that was made. And it doesn't matter if they're thrones, governments, principalities, buildings, lands, territories. He made it all. And he's the head of the body. You're in the church now. I'm glad you're in the church. But I want you to know Christ is the head of the body. He's the beginning of the firstborn from the dead. And you have heard of resurrection. He wants them to know he was the first who experienced the power of resurrection so that he can be God of all and Lord through all. These writings are a wonderful welcome to the body of Christ for a church that has not even met their leader. It's a wonderful welcome because somebody did such a good job of preaching Christ, explaining authority, explaining leadership, 
explaining that we have a bishop named Paul, explaining that we are of the same body as those that you've heard of that are called Christians all over the world, and explaining to them that because of his death on the cross, you now have the inheritance of the saints in light because you're in light, because you came out of the darkness and now you are walking in the marvelous light. So when you read in Colossians, the first chapter and those first 21 down to 24th verses even, it is a summary of the Christian faith a summary of the benefits of walking with the Lord and a summary of your responsibility now that you're in Christ. Now, how did they get in Christ? They heard the gospel preached. The Epaphras and others taught, called people together, and they accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. Uh, they did what Peter taught in Rome and to the Romans. He said, you know, if you confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. And, and it involves resurrection from the dead. It involves going to be with the Lord. And that responsibility, now that you're called out of the darkness and you've come into the light, now that you have made peace with God, and everybody who is in the church should know you have peace with God. You may not have peace with Satan, but you got peace with God. Somebody say, I got peace with God. God is not mad at me. God is not angry with me. He is not condemning me to hell. He has given me access. And I have access to the glory, access to the power, access to the anointing. And I got it because of something Jesus did for me. His death on the cross, the blood of his cross, by him, I am reconciled unto God. And I'm reconciled because even though he died in the flesh, he resurrected, came back, and told us that the same power that raised him from the dead, if it dwell in us, it'll raise us up. So now you may have gotten saved and you may have affiliated yourself uh, virtually with old landmark and Say, you know, this is my church. I love it. I love what I'm getting. I just never met the pastor. Paul was preaching to people the same way they had never met the pastor. But yet he's letting them know how you came in, how you are where you are. And now he wants to explain to you what your responsibility towards this reconciliation is. He's speaking to those that he describes in verse 21 that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. The things you were doing made you feel too distant from God, made you feel too disconnected from righteousness, too disconnected from the church. When you were in sin, you felt like I can never be saved. When you were in the world, you felt like you can never get out. The church wasn't right for you. The people were something wrong with church folk. You were alienated. You were disconnected. And in your own mind, you were enemies. They looking at me funny. Every time I go to church, they're preaching about me, folk talking about me. I don't like going with people looking at me. And it was in your mind. Y'all know it was in your mind. But now, somebody say, but now, hallelujah. But now he has reconciled you. He did it by dying for you, including you in the faith. And the only prerequisite, the only duty you have is found in the 23rd verse. You can have all of this access to God, access to heaven, access to the blessings, access to the crown of glory, if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled. You're in, but now you gotta stay in. You accepted Christ, now you got to keep your testimony. You believed him enough to save you, you got to believe him enough to keep you. He brought you this far, you got to believe him enough to bring you the rest of the journey. Am I preaching? If you continue in the faith, in the preaching, what we preach every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Tuesday, if you continue grounded, holding on, 
trusting in God, not being tossed about by every wind of doctrine, not holding on, letting go, holding on, letting go, getting grip, coming back, just get in there and stay there. Oh, my, my, my. You got to get in there and hold on because if you continue grounded, all of those promises are yours. You don't even have to worry about hell and don't have to worry about the devil because he has a plan to keep you from the evil one. So if you continue in the faith, continue strong, continue settled. And some of you say, well, Lord, I just miss church. I just wish I can get there more. Just continue in what you already received. Continue in praying, continue in fasting, continue in tithing and offerings, continuing and staying in touch with somebody who's connected so that you can be grounded. Play the videos, go back and get some of these old services, the Sundays and Tuesdays. There's got to be hundreds of them by now from Brother Dave and Brother Luther putting them on YouTube and they're on Facebook on the old landmark videos. If you don't have a word, you can get one. Just push that button. You got to stay grounded. You got to be settled. Somebody say settled. Settled is, is why Sister Amos and I have been married for 43 years. We ain't looking for nobody and trying to hold on to nobody, trying to get nobody else. We're settled. We're here. This is it. We've made up our mind day one. This is it. One man, one wife for a lifetime. This is it. That was our plan. We are settled. We're not really questioning. And you can't question God if you want to be in him long term. You can't question the authority of heaven. You cannot question the authority of the power of Jesus Christ to save. Will he really do what he said he's going to do? Sometimes I don't feel as saved as I want to feel. Get it in your mind. You are settled. My heart is fixed. My mind's made up. I'm going on with the Lord, not looking for anything else. I'm a child of God. I might be up, might be down. I might have issues and struggles, but you know what? He knows who I am and I know who he is and I'm his and he is mine. Hallelujah. I feel that word. But all of this blessing he's preaching to these new members in the church and to the people who haven't had an opportunity to meet him and to greet him and say, this is Paul, our bishop, and Epaphras, our pastor, and to the church at Coloss, he says to this, Colossians, be grounded in the faith settled. Be not moved away from the gospel that you've heard. You've heard it that to the utmost Jesus saves. Stay with that gospel. You've heard it that he is able to keep you. Stay with that gospel. You've heard it that he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins if you fall, if you sin. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Stay with that gospel. Don't let anybody talk you out of the relationship that you have with God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Know that you are a child of God, no matter what the devil brings or says to your heart, to your mind. Come out of that darkness, step back into the light, and you'll find out that you have a friend in Jesus. So verse 23 says, look, all of these things that he has designed for you. Uh, who were alienated, separated, and he's put you into the body of Christ, translated you into the kingdom of his father. He has already written your name in the Lamb's book of life. And all he says, I want you to do, hold on to what you got. Hold on. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and don't be moved away from the gospel that you've heard uh, and the gospel that was preached to every creature that is under heaven. The gospel that made Paul say, made me a minister, made me a minister. This gospel, if you hold on to it, it gives you the authority to reach into heaven and get what you want from God. It gives you the authority to say, Lord, it's me. And I'm in the need of prayer. And I need a touch. I need a blessing. I need your filling. I need restoration. I need your strength. Isn't it good to know that you can have that even though Pastor Aaron or Pastor Amos may not uh, be readily available to come rush to you, but you can rush to God. You can rush to God. You can rush to God, saints. You can ask God because if you continue in the faith, somebody say, I'm continuing. 
Some of you have been in school. There was a class you needed to graduate and to get your degree that you have worked so hard to get. Now you're advancing and there's a class comes along and you're struggling with it. Sometimes you do struggle with class. I mean struggling. Something in the mind says, just drop out of the class. But then you have to count up the cost. If I drop out of the class, I'll lose all of my labor of the past. If I drop out, I will lose all of the gain that I've received. If I drop out, I cannot receive my promise, my career, the choices that I've made. And then come up to the conclusion, you know what? I have worked too hard to give up now. I have struggled too hard to get out of what I was in to go back now. I have spent too much time and energy and investment in getting where I am that I will not let any one issue cause me to lose hope. I will not be moved away from the hope of the gospel. I will not be moved away from the hope of my faith. I will not be moved away from the hope of glory. I fully expect to come out of whatever I'm in. I fully expect I'm gonna make it through this class. I'm gonna make it if I gotta take it over time. I'm gonna make it if I gotta study harder. I'm gonna make it, why? Because there is a promise. And there's a promise from the Lord that if you hold on, don't move away from the hope of the gospel, the word that was preached to you that you've heard and that was preached to everybody. Hold on to your hope. And what was it that you heard when you got saved? Jesus can fix it. Is there a witness out there? Let somebody else who may be struggling, let somebody know who's out there that Jesus did fix it for you, that you had that same prayer. Lord, you got to fix it. I can't fix it myself. And I don't see how it's going to work. But I heard a preacher say, trust in the Lord. Come to Jesus and he'll make it all right. And I came and I'm waiting on all right. I'm waiting on my day. I'm waiting on my deliverance. Oh, will it ever come? Somebody encourage somebody and tell them, yes. It comes. You can make it. You can make it. Why? Because you have already been reconciled. You have already been accepted by God. You have already had your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You've already been given access to the throne of God. You have already had your name and your life included as those that are blood washed. Hallelujah. Father already knows who you are. In fact, he already has your graduation certificate. He already has your diploma. The enemy's telling you you can't pass the course. And he's saying you can because he wrote the course with you in mind. He wrote it with your potential. And he decided I'm gonna make it easy for you because not only did I write it, I get to grade it. And not only do I get to grade it, I get to grade it for someone of whom I am interested in their success. God is interested in your success in him. And all you have to do is trust his plan of reconciliation. As Paul writes to the Colossians, preached out by another, haven't met him, but he's heard reports about their faith, <laughs> hallelujah. Reports about their strength. He writes to them to say, hold on, because all those things that were promised to you are indeed yours if you continue. Today, I wanna to encourage somebody to continue in the faith. I know it's been a struggle, a couple of years of COVID, masking, social distancing, jobs in distress, Seems like things are getting tight again. Cost of living is going up. Food is good cost are going up. Transportation is going up. Housing has shot up. We're just blessed to have a roof over our head, blessed to have clothes on our back, some food in the refrigerator. And if you had to deal with these prices five years ago, if you had to deal with these conditions five years ago, you would have thought you couldn't make it. I want you to know the same God that took care of you then is taking care of you now. 
Why? Because all he wants you to do is continue in the faith. I trust in God wherever I may be, on the mountain peak or on the raging sea. Though come what may, from day to day, my heavenly father watches over me. God has a redemption plan for you that is so perfect that all you have to do is say, yes, Lord. All you have to do is say, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that he is the God of creation. And there wasn't anything made that he didn't make. And if he made it, he knows how it should work in my behalf. And if it's working against me, he can turn it around. Oh, somebody put a praise right there. I feel this thing. Hallelujah. You just got to continue. Keep on fasting. Keep on praying. Keep on believing. Trust in the gospel that you've received and heard all your life. Trust in the hope and don't be moved away from it. I'm going to hang on in there. I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to lean and depend on the everlasting name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, our Christ. The one who was, who is, and is yet to come. I don't care if the world moves away from Jesus. I'm holding on. Why? Because I know in whom I have believed. And I believe his report. His report says I am free. And I'm bringing you the same report today. You are free. You only have one if. And that is continue. You tithed, continue. You were liberal in giving, continue. You supported your church and in attendance, continue. You supported the neighborhood initiatives, continue. You gave clothes to the poor, continue. You fed somebody who was hungry, continue. You gave folk a ride, even at $5 a, a gallon, you can still give somebody a ride, continue. Because if you continue in the faith, grounded, settled, not moved away from the hope of the gospel, the gospel that you've heard has been preached. If you can do this, it will please the Father that you can have all of the fullness of the Godhead and that you can have peace with Jesus and through the cross. Somebody say peace. When you got that kind of peace, the environmental matters are important, they will not bring you down. Cost of living is important, but it will not bring you down. Political upheaval in Ukraine, that is important. Real life people are dying every day. The real life war is going on. We may not see it or feel it, and the news may not cover it as closely as they once did, but it's still happening and people are dying. People are still at the borders. And there's some body hungry, there's someone sick, there's someone whose life truly is endangered if they go back to their home country. These are issues we must deal with. Healthcare costs are still high. Medications need to be brought down. But you know what, if we remain grounded, all of these problems, while important, will not be enough to separate us from the love of God. And I don't know about you, I'm over here to stay. How about you? Are you over here to stay, Sister Hilda? You over here to stay, Sister Linda? You over here to stay, Sister Christine Washington? Are you over here to stay? Yes. Uh, Sister Sandy, God bless you. Over here to stay, Sister Abby, Faye, Luther, Tanita, Edna Joy. Over here to stay. Hallelujah. I am in the Lord to stay. Because you know what? That issue about will I stay in church, that's been settled. That issue about will I hold on, <laughs> that's been settled. That issue about is Jesus my Lord, <laughs> that's been settled. That issue about do I believe in the power of God, that's been settled. And you know what? I'm at, I'm at peace with God. And that's where you ought to be. And he has made peace with you. I, I love this part of the text, verse 20. We're at peace with him because he, the greater, made peace with the lesser. <laughs> we have peace because he made peace through the blood of his cross. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Didn't have to do it, but he did. He laid a foundation, opened up a way, the way of the cross, died for our sins, 
that all of us, the lesser, could be reconciled to him, the greater. So he did all the work. He made it all possible. My sisters and brothers, I want you to walk in the love of God, having this confidence that he that has begun a good work in you, he will continue to perform it until the day of the Lord. He will continue to keep you. He will continue to embrace you. He will continue to make a way for you. Thank you, Jesus. He will continue to open doors for you and cause you to say, I am blessed. Come on, put a praise right there, everybody. Hallelujah. It pleased the Father to give all this to Jesus and Jesus to share it with us. And now, Bishop Paul says, I'm so happy for you. And here Bishop Amos is saying to you, I'm happy for you. Landmark and decision and new seasons and saints in Puerto Rico. And I'm happy for you. Uh, overcoming church. I'm happy for you, breaking chains. I'm happy for you, whoever is connected to our ministry. I'm happy for you because the promise of God is over you as a cloud and it will never leave you by day nor by night. The promises of the Lord are upon you and you can have just what you need because you have this hope. As long as you got hope and our hope is manifested by our faith, and as long as you got it, it's done. Hallelujah. I just need about 20 of y'all to say it's done. It's done. And I believe God that it's done in you. Thank you so much. And Lord, we thank you for the word that you've given us to minister to your people. We thank you for the blessing that adds no sorrow. We thank you for the word that is sent to encourage those that are in the struggle and struggling to hold on and wondering about their future. You sent a word to let them know that everything is all right now. And I pray for them and I pray for their homes and families, children and the children's children, that all of their desires can be met and all of their needs provided, that everything they need will come to pass because you, the Lord, hallelujah, you have ordained it and you have committed that it should be so. And we praise you and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, we say thank God and amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you. And I appreciate you listening in. Thank you for listening to Old Landmark Church of God in Christ today. I pray you continue to be a blessing to the church, blessed through tithe and offering, giving instruction of there. That's part of your Christian responsibility. Present your gifts to the Lord through tithe, through offering. However, the Lord has blessed you, so ought you to give. Tithe is your 10% increase that you intentionally set aside to bless the kingdom of God, but from it comes a tremendous blessing that only God can give. It's real, and it'll bless you. Separate your offering, separate your gift. Give unto the Lord and watch him bless you. Thank you so many of you are giving, and if you do, just write in there, I gave. Thank you, Pastor Jimmy of Puerto Rico. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. We're praying for First Lady Amos. Want God to continue to bless and heal her. Thank you, Sister Buckingham, for your gift. Want God to continue to bless and raise her up. And others of you, thank you, Sister Abby, says, I gave. Others of you that I may not know your condition, but you got a situation in your life. I want to know God is able. And he's able to turn it around, whatever needs to be turned. Open doors, whatever needs to be open. He will bless you in the city and bless you in the field. These are his promises to you. Trust in the Lord. Watch God work it out for you. Watch God make a way for you. Thank you, Sister Hilda, faithful giver. Thank you. Watch God turn it around. Give you the desires of your heart. Watch him bless your home, your family, your children. Watch him touch your body and raise you up again. Strengthen your bones, rebuke pain, arthritis pain, knee pain, joint pain, hip pain, headaches, migraine. The medicine that didn't work, watch God make it start working. And after a while, your doctor may tell you don't even need it anymore. You gotta trust in God. You gotta have some hope. And the hope that's in us comes from him. God bless you, we love you. I pray that you've received something out of this lesson tonight. 
We're praying for the saints everywhere for Pastor Aaron, amen, as he's working in his family. Pray for the colleagues in the faith all over. Many are sick with COVID virus, but our God is able to turn it away, speak healing into our lives. If you haven't been vaccinated, take the vaccine. I just got my booster yesterday, arm sore, but I feel good in Jesus. I want you to live so that we can tell the story to our children and our children's children. Do all that you can. Obey your physician, take your medicine, take your therapy and pray. If God heals you, your healing will stand up to man's test and it'll prove whether you need it or not. I know you wanna believe God that it's done. When it is done, done it will be the evidence. I believe God is gonna do it for you. You just got to trust in God. I love God, love you. We're praying for your peace in the Lord. We'll be back tonight at six o'clock. Come on, join me at six o'clock. Bishop Amos live. So many things happening in the world. Look like the killings won't stop. Look like the devil is busy. But he's a busy devil. You just need to be a busy believer. Hold on to what God has given you and watch God bless you. I love you. We look to see you tonight at six o'clock. God bless you.